fish upon a star makes no difference who you are anyone you like to hear will come to you good eye mites now we'll just keep swimming and learn about Nemo characters, starting with Nemo himself. Nemo is a curious and impressionable clownfish who lives alone with his overprotective single father, Marlin. Nemo has led a very sheltered life. He yearns for adventure and dreams of seeing the wonders of the Great Barrier Reef. Despite being born with one smaller, weaker fin, Nemo doesn't let anything hold him back. Unfortunately, his can-do attitude doesn't always have the best results. Determined to prove his bravery, Nemo swims out beyond the drop-off, only to be caught by a scuba diver and taken to live in a tank at a dentist's office. It is only once he's been captured that Nemo learns the real meaning of bravery and comes to truly appreciate his father. These days, Nemo is happy to spend his time with Marlin and their friend Dory in the sea anemone he calls home, though he still enjoys a good adventure. Nemo makes a cameo in Monsters, Inc. as a toy in Boo's room, and the name Nemo is Latin for no one. There's Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray is Nemo's teacher. He believes in giving his students a practical fins-on education. He often gives his students rides on his back to show them other creatures living in the ocean, and he sings songs to help them remember what they've learned. Although incredibly jolly and optimistic, Mr. Ray is also realistic. He recognizes danger when he sees it and has been known to shelter his students under his fins to protect them. Mr. Ray takes his teaching seriously and will happily answer any question his students may have, assuming he knows the answer. Meet Tad, one of Nemo's classmates. Tad is a yellow and purple butterfly fish. This little guy is rather obnoxious and proud of it. He's also daring. When he and his friends see a boat off the edge of the drop-off, they each take turns trying to swim as close to it as possible. But Tad's sense of adventure has its limits. When he sees a diver, he quickly swims away. There's Sheldon. Sheldon is a classmate of Nemo's. Although the two are now friends, Sheldon initially made fun of Nemo for his small fin. He was scolded by his father for his behavior and has since been much kinder to Nemo. Like Nemo's other friends, Sheldon is brave, if immature. He joins the other students in seeing who can swim the farthest off the reef, but he quickly retreats when he sees the diver who ultimately takes Nemo. Life for Sheldon is a bit tougher underwater, as the poor little seahorse is H2O intolerant. <laughs> this is Pearl! A little flapjack octopus, Pearl is another of Nemo's classmates and friends. Although Pearl joins her classmates in swimming off the debris, she quickly grows frightened. In fact, Pearl finds most things frightening. Whenever she's startled, she inks, releasing a black cloud into the ocean around her. According to Pearl, one of her tentacles is shorter than the other, although no one else can see the difference. She also claims to be able to walk on land. <laughs> There's Marlin. As a young clownfish, Marlin was playful, happy, and easygoing. But everything changed when his wife, Coral, and all but one of his children were eaten by a barracuda. Marlin swore in that moment to protect his one remaining child, and he has kept that promise. Over time, Marlin has grown incredibly serious. In spite of being a clownfish, he can't tell a good joke. Overprotective, paranoid, and worrisome, Marlin fears something bad happening to Nemo. The only way he knows to deal with this is to watch over Nemo so closely that nothing can happen to him. He even accompanies Nemo to his first day of school. Although he may go overboard in protecting his son, everything Marlin does is because he loves Nemo more than anything in the world. When he learns he must journey across the ocean to rescue Nemo, Marlin discovers his love is strong enough to overcome even his greatest fears. Along the way, Marlin also learns to lighten up, let go, and even accept help from others, particularly a blue tangfish named Dory, of whom he becomes incredibly fond. 
Marlin's wife's name was Coral, and before the barracuda appeared, the two were waiting for 400 eggs to hatch. And Marlin makes a cameo on Monsters, Inc. He can be seen in a painting hanging on the wall behind the sushi chef. Say hello to Crush. When it comes to traveling the ocean's currents, no one has as much fun as Crush. This 150-year-old sea turtle is young at heart, with a laid-back surfer dude attitude that lets him go with the flow. But Crush is no drifter. He loves nothing more than the thrill of riding the rollicking East Australian current with his son Squirt. Crush is a helpful guy. He happily helps Marlin and Dory get to Sydney Harbor to rescue Nemo, and later helps Marlin, Nemo, and Dory get to California to find Dory's parents. Now here is Squirt. Squirt is like a smaller version of his father. Equally laid back, he loves riding the current and shares Crush's fearless attitude. Squirt's welcoming, high-spirited personality allows him to make friends anywhere. He enjoys playing hide-and-seek with Dory and even joins Nemo's class for a time as an exchange student. Say good day to Bruce. <laughs> Bruce is a friendly and usually vegetarian great white shark. Bruce feels that sharks have gotten a bad rap and is out to fix his reputation. He is part of a nice shark club of recovering meat eaters whose motto is fish are friends, not food. Although generally a laid-back guy who enjoys a good laugh, Bruce has little control over himself once his natural instincts kick in. At the smell of blood, he turns into a mindless fish-eating shark. And Bruce is somehow also ticklish. <laughs> Don't see that often. Meet Anchor. Anchor is a vegetarian hammerhead shark who fights his instinct to eat fish every day. He's a nice guy, and he wants to be friends with the rest of the fish in the ocean. If only he can get over his nasty habit of eating them. He's smaller and thinner than the other sharks in his support group for recovering meat eaters. Mm -hmm. There's Dory! Nowhere in the ocean will you find a more welcoming, sociable, talkative fish than Dory. She would love to chat all day long and would gladly tell her life story to anyone who would listen, if she could just remember it. <laughs> Dory is a blue tank fish with short-term memory loss, although a few things stick with her, such as how to read English and speak whale. Most information flies out of her head in a matter of seconds. She was separated from her parents as a child when she got caught in the, to the undertow, and she has only recently remembered them and been reunited with them. Being on her own for so long, Dory developed a bit of separation anxiety. Although she's actually quite capable of taking care of herself, she fears being left behind and forgetting everything she's managed to retain. Dory values her friendships and is an incredibly loyal friend. She does things her own way and inspires others to do the same. Did you know that? Dory was originally supposed to be a male character, but the writer of the movie was inspired when watching the Ellen DeGeneres show and wrote the character specifically to be played by Ellen. And Dory can't remember Nemo's name. She instead calls him Chico, Fabio, Bingo, Harpo, Elmo, or Memo. You know. This is Chum. Chum is a hyperactive mako shark with a hook lodged into snout as a result of a fight with a fisherman. As a pup, Chum attended a posh boarding school for predators. These days, he is part of the Fish Are Friends and Not Food support group. Although he does not seem entirely committed to this cause, Chum looks bored while reciting the club's pledge and admits to misplacing the fish friend he was supposed to bring to a meeting. Chum enjoys participating in shoving fights with a fellow support group member, Anchor, and has a particular dislike for dolphins. <laughs> this is Nigel. Nigel is a brown pelican who lives in Sydney Harbor. He spends the vast majority of his time in the window of a dentist's office, diagnosing dental problems with the help of his friends in the dentist's fish tank. Unfortunately for Nigel, the dentist is not particularly fond of having a pelican in his window and often chases him away. Nigel is a friendly guy, eager to help out others. He saves Marlin and Dory from an attack by some seagulls and brings them to the dentist's office to rescue Nemo. There's Peach! 
Unless you're a starfish, you have no idea how slowly time can really pass. Stuck high up on the glass, Peach sees and broadcasts everything that goes on outside the tank, but nothing of interest ever happens. Peach has no option but to count titles, memorize innumerable dental procedures, and then do it again and again. <laughs> Say hi to Gurgle. Gurgle is a colossal germaphobe. If they made little rubber gloves for fish, <laughs> he would be first in line to get them. Believing everything is covered with germs, Gurgle won't touch anything. He's terrified of his surroundings, the tank walls, the pebbles that cover the bottom, even the other fish. He knows the limited life expectancy of tank fish, and he is not taking any chances. Meet Gil. Gil is the maverick of the dentist's office fish tank. He's the leader of an eclectic group of tropical fish known as the Tank Gang who hang on his every word and are drawn to his magnetic personality. This tough, scarred fish was raised in the ocean, but he was taken at a young age to live in a tank. Surrounded by fish who have spent their entire lives in the box, Gil alone feels the pull to be free. Though he dreams of one day breaking out and returning to the ocean, his failed escape attempts have broken his spirit. With Nemo's arrival in the tank, Gil is inspired again to find a way back to the sea. There's Bloat. Bloat can blow up, and it's not just because he's a blowfish, he's got a temper. This temperamental character tries his best to maintain a sunny disposition. He is also Gil's trusted lieutenant in running tank business. However, the stress of being cooped up in a glass box with the other fish, especially Gurgle, is often more than he can handle, and he tends to blow things out of proportion. <laughs> Say bonjour to Jacques. Every fish tank needs a creature to help clean the enclosed watery environment. In this tank, it is Jacques who cleans and cleans with the fervor of a soldier in the French resistance and also talks like one. Just yell his name and this little fire races to do battle with his sworn enemy, Tank Scum. This is Darla Sherman. Darla is the niece of the dentist. Although a bit bratty and spoiled, she is not intentionally mean to the fish. She's just a bit careless. Darla loves fish and is thrilled at the prospect of having one as a pet. But as any member of the tank gang will quickly note, she's not the best with them. In fact, her nickname is Fish Killer. Darla gets so excited about the fish her uncle gives her that she has a tendency to shake the bags they are in until the fish die. Nemo uses this trait to his advantage to escape the dentist's office. This is Bubbles! Like a playful puppy obsessed with the favorite toy, Bubbles is enamored of, well, Bubbles. All day, he faithfully waits for them to burst out from the tank's plastic treasure chest, and then he joyously scrambles to put them back. They are his Bubbles, and he has got to catch them all. And this is Deb. Deb and her identical twin sister, Flo, are like two peas in a pod. They do everything together, swim, laugh, share secrets, and they are a perfect match. It's for this reason that the rest of the tank gang does not have the heart to tell Deb that Flo is merely her reflection on the tank glass. <laughs> and those are all the Finding Nemo characters. Join me next time and we'll talk about the characters from this film's sequel, Finding Dory.